Good morning, guys. It's really good to have you join me today. Can we just start in prayer and then we jump straight into my message? Uh, Father God, we just come before you again and we just say thank you for your love and your grace, Lord God, the way in which you always speak into our lives. And as we spend this time together this morning, Lord God, I pray and ask you to do that now, to speak into our lives and let us hear what you have to say to us. Let us not only hear, but let us be people that receive and apply these things to our life, all for your praise and for your glory. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, you'll be pleased to know that I've not got a Christmas carol to start off my message this week. But uh, I I do feel like I need to speak further on the subject of joy. Let me explain to you how I came to that conclusion. Uh, At the end of last week's message, James, one of the guys in the congregation, he came up and said to me afterwards, Uh, that he felt it was really good for us to explore the whole idea of joy and that uh, he felt he needed more joy in his life, to experience more joy in his life. I'm totally with you on that, James. I certainly need to experience more joy in my life. James's words, as always, and he's got a gift of it with this, I think, um, really encouraged me and kind of confirmed confirmed to me that I was on the right track as far as the uh, content of last week's message. Later on in the day, on Sunday afternoon, I was out walking. It was a beautiful afternoon. I was out walking with my dog and I was listening to a podcast sermon. And uh, guess what the the theme, guess what the the sermon, the theme ended up being in that sermon? Uh, Joy. (laughs) I'm sure you guessed that one quite well. And, And so I came home from my walk and I started to think, maybe I didn't really cover the subject of joy sufficiently. Uh, the theme, after all, was meant to be in that of joy. Maybe, uh, maybe there's more work still to be done on the whole idea of joy. Um, I spoke quite well, I think, on, on the, um, the value of spiritual disciplines in our lives today. Obviously, the, the, the verses that we looked at from Mark's Gospel uh, spoke very much into the whole idea of fasting. Uh, and, and so I, f- I felt I covered that quite well, how we need to uh, still practice spiritual disciplines, but we do so from a place of relationship with God, with the Holy Spirit, uh, and from a place of joy. But I still f- had that kind of um, inner feeling that I didn't touch on the whole practical side of experiencing joy in our day-to-day lives um, sufficiently, that there was more work to be done. From there, this past Tuesday, I was talking to a friend of mine in South Korea. Um, We try to speak weekly, and as we finish, we we generally pray for each other. Uh, And he felt that the Lord laid on his heart a verse for me. And the verse was, the joy of the Lord is your strength. (laughs) Now, putting all of this together, I think it's pretty easy to see the direction that God has given me as far as the content for today's message. And so, if you will, um, today's message is part two on the subject of joy. Um, Yeah, I'm not just sharing this by way of an introduction. It might feel like it is, but actually I wanted to share this because uh, I wanted to give you a practical example of how God speaks into my life and how God speaks to me. I think sometimes we can go through life and, and we really struggle to discern the voice of God when he's speaking to us. In actual fact, um, God is always speaking to us. We just kind of need to tune in to what he's saying, you know, and pick up and discern what he's saying. Uh, so I just wanted to share that by way of just giving you an example of how God speaks to me. Uh, and, and maybe, yeah, you can relate that to your own life. God speaks to me in very practical ways. He speaks to me through people. Um, he speaks to me through the things that I watch, things that I listen to. Um, not all of them are Christian. Sometimes it's through you know, to stuff I'm watching on the television or secular music that I'm listening to. Um, God often speaks to me through prophetic words, pictures, verses that are given to me and so on and so forth. So I I wanted to put that out there as just a a practical example of how God speaks to us today. Anyway, that was a little side note just um, by way of encouragement for you. I want to jump into my message now and I want to pick up from uh, the little article that I, I finished off with in, in last week's message. Uh, I wanted to finish on a practical note, but I left it quite late in my message to do so. So uh, all I was really able to do was to um, share an article that I'd read in the week as I was preparing my sermon. The article was on the difference between happiness and joy. Uh, and I'm going to be touching on that a little bit in my message today. So I'm going to be sharing some of the, ver- uh, some of the lines from that little article in my message today. 
Anyway, on with my message. Um, I want to start today by saying something that might shock you. It might shock you. God doesn't prioritise happiness in our lives. Let me say that again. God doesn't prioritise happiness in our lives. At least he doesn't prioritise happiness in the same way that we do. And we do. We all, we all prioritise happiness in our lives. And it's not a bad thing. It's a human trait. We, you know, we don't sit and watch a movie because we want to come away feeling depressed. We want to, you know, we want to be lifted up and made, you know, feel happy. At least <laughs> with chick flicks and stuff like that. You know, uh, we don't uh, buy a decadent cake because we want to come away feeling miserable. We want to pick ourselves up. We want to feel happy about things. And we, we prioritise happiness in our relationships. We prioritise happiness. It's not a bad thing. It's a human trait. But God doesn't prioritise happiness in the same way in our lives. God is more concerned with joy. And the kind of joy I'm talking about here, it's not like worldly joy. It's, uh, it's a kingdom joy. It's, it's something that goes far deeper. Uh, it's something that we have access to for our relationship with God. <clears throat> Excuse me. Happiness is fleeting. Uh, you can experience happiness. It's here one moment, it's gone the next. Joy, the kind of joy that we're exploring today is an eternal joy that we have in and through, through our relationship with God. You know, you can buy yourself a brand new car uh, and, and you feel really happy and really content and it's, it's, a, it's a good feeling. You, know? you feel good about it. Uh, six months later that or a year later, that car is no longer new and, and you don't feel the same. Uh, whereas the joy that we're looking at today, that remains the same. It's eternal. You see, the joy that we're, we're exploring is, is, the, is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. This joy that we're talking about here is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. It's not something that is here one moment and then disappears out of our reach. It's something that is eternal. It's something that God has made it so that we always have access to this joy. This joy that we're talking about here, God has made it so, so that we, we always have access to this joy. No matter what is going on around us, no matter where we are in life, um, because of that relationship with, with God, because it's a fruit of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we always have access to it. Little question. Did you know that um, actually there's nowhere in Scripture where God promises happiness, promises us happiness, or even tells us to be happy in life? Um, I might, yeah... <laughs> That's, that's my understanding of scripture anyway. I can't find anywhere where it says that God um, yeah, promises us happiness and, or even tells us to be happy. You might find if you read the Good News Bible that uh, uh, the word blessed or blessed has been replaced with happy is. Uh, it's just a very simplified way of understanding the word blessed. But actually there's nowhere in scripture, from, as I say, from my understanding where God promises us happiness. Now, that might sound a bit off to you. Yeah, that might not sound quite right to you. Uh, but stay with me. The reason why it sounds a bit off is because of our understanding of happiness. Happiness can be defined in this way. Happiness is an emotion in which one experiences feelings ranging from contentment and satisfaction to bliss and intense pleasure. I think that's a pretty good uh, definition of, of happiness. Now, when I think of that definition, uh, when I explore that definition, that sounds like something that I would hope a loving Heavenly Father would want me to experience in life. But think back to that little article that I finished with last week. Happiness depends on outward circumstances. It depends on what's happening around me, uh, what's happening to me. Joy depends on inward character. And we're growing, our character is growing. What's that verse in James? Count it all joy, brothers and sisters, when you experience hardships and trials because it develops within us uh, 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 character and perseverance and so on and so forth. Our inner character is being developed through our relationship with God. Happiness depends on outward circumstances. Joy depends on inward character. Happiness depends on what happens to us, whether good things are happening to us. Joy depends on who lives within us. And we know who lives within us for our relationship with God. Happiness is based on chance or circumstances, being in the right place at the right time. 
Uh, joy is based on a choice. We can choose to tap into that fruit of the Spirit within us. We can choose to, uh, we can choose joy. Now, I'm sure you're starting to recognize the difference, uh, but also which has greater value to us. The difference between happiness and joy and what has greater value to us. So, moving on. Happiness is, uh, if happiness is based on external events, things that happen to us or for us, uh, then when we don't experience those things, when we experience bad things in life, when, things, when life seems to go pear-shaped, then obviously the, ha- the opposite to happiness comes into play. Uh, ha- unhappiness starts to set in within our lives. You see, happiness depends upon a lack of struggles. It depends upon a lack of hardship in our lives. And God can't promise us a life free from struggles, a life free from hardships, a life free from loss. As Christians, as believers, we've all experienced such things in our lives. We frequently face uh, external events or things that have the potential to cause distress, uh, to cause unhappiness in our lives. It's called life. Life happens. It's called life. Cars break down, uh, um, water pipes burst. Um, sometimes the wife comes home a little bit miserable from a bad day at work. Don't tell her. I, uh, don't tell her I told you that one. Uh, things like jobs come to a close, and sometimes yeah, the other contract ends, and we get retrenched. Our child doesn't come home with the best reports. Yeah, life happens. Our child not coming home with the best school report. I haven't experienced too much of that yet. But uh, you get where I'm going. Life happens. Life happens. If God was to promise us a life of complete happiness, he would have to eradicate any form of trial, any form of struggle, any form of trouble from our lives. And of course, uh, God doesn't do such things. He didn't even do that for Jesus, if you think about it. The things that Jesus experienced for us. What he does promise, what our God does promise us, us is access to joy. Because it's a fruit of the Spirit that we have through our relationship with God, through having the Holy Spirit dwelling within us, God is able to promise us continued access to joy. You see, as a believer, joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. And it's through grace, it's through our relationship with God, it's through our faith and trust in Jesus that we get filled with the Holy Spirit. And as we choose to grow that connection with him, as no matter what's going on around us, we choose to remain connected to our God through the Holy Spirit, then we get to access the kind of joy that we're exploring today. We get to uh, experience and access uh, kingdom of God joy. See if you recognize this verse, Isaiah 35, verse 10. And the ransomed of the Lord will return and come to Zion with singing, crowned with unending joy. Joy and gladness will overtake them and sorrow and sign will flee. You probably remember that verse from last week. It's one of the verses that I shared in my message last week. You know, joy is different to happiness. It's very different to happiness. There's similarities, obviously, but it is different to happiness. It goes much deeper than happiness. Joy is an inside job. It's a fruit of the Holy Spirit within us. It's an attitude. Joy is a choice. We get to choose to, uh, we get to choose joy even in the circumstances of life. Joy comes from knowing that you are unconditionally loved and accepted by God. Let that one drop into your heart. Joy comes from knowing that you are unconditionally loved and accepted by God. Joy can be defined as an emotion of great delight or happiness caused by something exceptionally good or satisfying. That's another good translator definition, eh? An emotion, joy can be defined as an emotion of great delight or happiness caused by something exceptionally good or satisfying. What can be more satisfying and good than knowing that you are unconditionally loved and accepted by God? What can be more satisfying in life than knowing that you are unconditionally loved and accepted by God? Are you getting this yet? 
Is the penny starting to drop? Are you seeing how this whole joy idea can work in your life, in your day-to-day -day life? Joy comes despite what is going on around us, from knowing that God is always with us, from knowing that God will always love us, that he will never leave us, that he will, he will always extend grace towards us. Even on my worst day, when I've made the worst of choices, I can still experience a level of joy because I know that my God will always extend grace towards me that I can turn back to God, that I can confess my sins and he will restore me. Joy comes from knowing such things. Joy comes from having God's incredible love active in our lives. It comes from the knowledge that no matter what happens out there in the world around us, nothing can separate me from the love that God has for me. Amen? When we have joy, it means that no matter what is happening out there, whatever is happening in our lives, we can still have peace. We can still, have, we, we can still feel contentment. We can still experience joy because nothing has changed in my heart. Nothing has changed in my spirit. No matter what is going on around me, nothing can change who I am from within, who God has made me. I am a new creation in Christ. Sickness, death, financial problems, even hurtful people, they can rob me of my happiness. But as I stay connected with God, through the thick and the thin, as I stay connected with God, nothing, yeah, as I stay connected with God in my heart, nothing can steal away the joy that I can experience in life, that I choose to experience in life. Even the hardships of life, none of that can steal away our joy. Okay, as I begin to wrap up this message, I want to bring you back to that opening shocking statement that I made. God doesn't prioritise our happiness. Man, sometimes I wish he did, um, but actual fact, God doesn't prioritise our happiness. But he, he does very much want us to be filled with joy. No matter what's going on around us, he wants us to still experience joy. He wants us to be joyful people. Uh, going back to that verse, that prophetic verse of Isaiah, and the ransomed of the Lord will return and come to Zion with singing, crowned with unending joy. Joy and gladness will overtake them and sorrow and, and sighing will flee. We are to be a people that can smile in the face of trying and testing circumstances. God wants us to be able to approach all the difficulties of life with peace and resilience, even with a supernatural joy. Because no matter what happens out there, nothing can change in here. Nothing changes in my heart. I am firmly rooted and established in my relationship with God. Okay, let me bring some conclusion to this message, a short message today. You might be sat listening to this message this morning. It might be later in the day that you're listening to this message. You might be sitting there thinking, you know what, Mark? That's a really great message on joy. I definitely have a, a better understanding of the fruit of the Spirit. I understand it in a deeper way. But is the experience of joy in all circumstances, is it something that is really possible for me in my life? Maybe that's what you're thinking at the moment. Is it really possible for me in my life? In answer to that question, think about, think about the apostles. Obviously, that's our, uh, the, the Bible is our go-to source, if you will, resource. Um, so think about the lives of the apostles found, obviously, in the Bible. Think about the time when they were in prison, when they were being persecuted for their faith, when they were imprisoned for sharing the gospel. They were still able to experience a level of joy in their lives. Man, some of them were even in prison singing worship songs and pointing people to Jesus, leading pre people to Jesus. This wasn't because they are better than you or I. Uh, they were in no way better than you or I. They were just normal, everyday men and women. It wasn't because they have a gift uh, that we don't have. It wasn't because they have, an ac they have access to joy on a level that we don't have. Simply put, 
They experienced joy no matter the circumstances because they got it. The penny had dropped in their lives. They had had their light bulb moments. They knew who they were in Christ. They knew that nothing could separate them from the love of God. They knew in their hearts that nothing could rob them of their identity as children of God. They even knew that the hardships they were facing would at some point come to an end. That their God, our God, remains sovereign. They knew that the, they knew the God in whom they had put their faith and trust in. They had an ongoing relationship, an ongoing connection with the God whom they put their faith and trust in. And lastly, they knew that they were unconditionally loved and accepted by God. They got it. The penny had dropped in their lives. And so my closing question for you this morning is, have you got it? Has the penny dropped in your life? Happiness depends on outward circumstances. It depends on what happens around us or to us. Joy depends on inward character. Staying connected with God, even through the, even through the troubling times and growing in your relationship with God. Happiness depends on what happens to us. Joy depends on who lives within us. By faith, the Holy Spirit lives within you. Happiness is based on chance or circumstances, being in the right place at the right time. Joy is based on a choice. I want to encourage you, as I did last Sunday, I want to encourage you, choose joy and may the joy of the Lord be your strength. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I say thank you for this, this little message, Lord God, but an encouraging message, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for joy, for the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for all the fruits of the Spirit, Lord God. Thank you that we get to have full access to them, uh, not in and of ourselves, not because of anything we've done in and of ourselves, but because of you, Lord God, because of your love, because of your grace, because of our relationship with you. Thank you, Lord God, that you've invited us into that relationship. And by faith, we've responded to you. And, and Lord, we can't avoid the world that we live in. We can't avoid hardships in life. Uh, you didn't promise us that we would live a life uh, where these things wouldn't happen. Uh, it's not possible. We're living in a world that is fallen, that there, there are bad people and bad situations in this life. Um, but Lord, even in those moments, even in those moments when we've been hurt and let down, and because of our relationship with you, we can still have access to joy and we can still choose joy. And when we do, Lord God, from my own experience, we are lifted above the circumstances of life and we are able to uh, get through them and persevere. We're able to grow in and through the hardships of life. So, Lord, thank you. Thank you that you make this joy available to us. And I pray for my brothers and sisters. I pray for myself that we will find our way into joy and into a deeper relationship with you. Thank you, Lord God, that we are children of God, that we are unconditionally loved and accepted by you and nothing can separate us from your love. Lord God, thank you again for speaking to us this morning. May we live uh, in the good of the message that you've shared with us this morning. May we live for your praise and for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in again. It's been really good to share with you this morning and I look forward to sharing with you again soon. God bless you.